Hey and welcome back to another video. In this video, you're going to learn all about Python f-strings and how to use them. You'll learn what Python f-strings are, how to evaluate different expressions within them, how to use conditionals within Python f-strings, and we'll close off by looking at how to format your strings using f-strings, as well as a new feature introduced in Python 3.8 in terms of how to better debug your programs using f-strings. Let's get started. All right, so let's talk about Python f-strings. They can also be called formatted string literals. They're created by placing an f in front of your string and placing expressions within curly braces. Now, if this doesn't make much sense to you right now, don't worry, we'll explore this in more detail in just a few moments. They can also be used with single, double, or triple quotes. And finally, they were introduced in Python 3.6, meaning that you need at least Python 3.6 or higher in order to be able to use them. If you want to be able to use the debugging features, you need at least Python 3.8. Now let's take a look at some examples. So let's take a look at how you were previously able to print out different variables within your strings. So I'm going to cre create a new variable here called name. I'm just going to assign it the string Nick. So previously, you may have used the percent sign method, which went something like this. So if we wanted to print out our resulting string to say, hi, my name is Nick, you would have written print, hi, my name is, and then a percent sign followed by an S, then after your quotation mark, another percent sign, and then the variable name. So when we run this, you can see here that it did print out, hi, my name is Nick. Now, this is totally fine, but it can get very confusing once you have multiple variable names. And it's also a little bit limited in that you're not able to actually evaluate different expressions using this method. And we'll cover this off in a bit more detail. So in order to replace this with an F string, I'm just going to comment this out here. We're just going to write print. And then we'll put an F and then our quotes. And then we'll write, hi, my name is. And then we'll have these curly braces here. And directly within the curly braces, we're going to write the variable name. So when we run this, we can see that we get the exact same result. Now this is incredibly powerful because it's a lot more intuitive to be able to follow along what's going on here rather than having to tie back the positional arguments that you're placing in here. So I mentioned earlier that you can also evaluate different expressions using Python f-strings. So one of the really powerful features is the ability to be able to evaluate those expressions at runtime, meaning that you can insert the expressions directly inside of the th string. So if we wanted to print out, for example, the following statement, where we write 2 plus 3 is equal to, now again in our curly braces, we're going to write 2 plus 3. So what this is going to do when we run this, it's going to evaluate this expression first and then place it into the string. So our resulting string should say 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And it does. So we can also combine this with different variables. So say we wanted to print out a statement that says the area of the triangle is equal to, but instead of declaring first another variable that contains the function for this, we can actually do this directly within the string. So we can write print, and then again we'll write our f. The area of the triangle is equal to then in our curly braces, we would write base times height divided by 2. So when we run this, we can see here that it's actually done the math for us by first including the variables in here, evaluating what that expression evaluates to, and then placing it into the string. So another really useful use case for f-strings is the ability to access dictionary items. So I'm going to create a new dictionary here and I'm gonna call it person so what we have here is a key value pair for a person so we have the value the key of name returns Nick 
the key of age has a value pair of 32 and so on. So now say we wanted to be able to print out some of these characteristics in a more plain language sentence. We could write print and then an F string where we write person dot get name is and then in curly braces again person dot get age years old. So when we run this we can get back Nick is 32 years old. So this is incredibly powerful in order to be able to parse different pieces of data and embed that directly within different more plain language strings. Now we can also loop over different items with F strings. So for example if we turned this into a list we can call this people. Now I'm just gonna embed this in a list and then I'll take this dictionary and just make a second copy of it. We'll change some of these values so our next person will be Katie. Let's make Katie 30 years old and we'll make her a female. So what we can write here I'm just going to make this a little prettier. Uh, we can write for person in people and then indent this. And so what we can get back now is it will actually return for each item within our list a new sentence. So when we run this we'll get back Nick is 32 years old, Katie is 30 years old. This is incredibly powerful in order to be able to access and iterate over different items and return something much more understandable and in plain language. Where we can really start having fun is building in conditions into our F strings. So let's take a look at an example. We'll build a new object. We'll call this person equals. And then we'll have gender. And we'll make this person a female. And then we'll have name and let's call her Mary. So if we wanted to print out um, our resulting string to say she went to the store. Now we could of course hard, co hard code the value of she however if we wanted to loop over different objects and return a more grammatically correct answer we can also use conditions within our f strings. So let's take a look at how this is actually done. So if we wrote an expression within our F string where our expression is contained within our curly braces, we would write she if gender is equal to female else he. So our condition is this middle part here. So if gender is equal to female. If this evaluates to true or the condition is met, it will return she. Now if the condition isn't met and it evaluates to false, it will return this value here, meaning he. So if we now wanted to write she went to the store, we could write print f. And now here, be careful here to not use the same type of quote as you do for the entire wrapping meaning we can't use double quotes here because it would cancel it out. However, here we would write she if person dot get gender is equal to female else he went to the store. So let's run this and see whether or not it actually worked the way that we expected it to. So here we can see she went to the store. Now, what if we had a different person? Let's call him Nick again and make him male. Now if we run this, we can see that it returns he went to the store. So this again is incredibly powerful when you're looping over different pieces of data and you want to be able to return different grammatically correct pieces of data. Now it doesn't just work with strings. You can also be able to evaluate to different uh, types of data including integers to be able to say whether or not a value is over something or equal to one in order to be able to make sure that your code is either singular or plural. 
but it's incredibly powerful. Now we're going to dive into some more interesting pieces around f-strings. Namely, we're going to look at how to format data. So the formatting pieces of f-strings can take a little bit of getting used to, and admittedly, I don't know these off by heart, and I still look them up all the time. So before we dive into how to actually format things as currencies or to different decimal places, let's take a look at something really cool in terms of how to align different pieces of strings. The way that this will work is that we'll print out a string and say how much space we want that string to actually take up, even if that string isn't actually as long as we're saying. So let's take a look at this example. What we have here is an F string where we're going to print out the word apple and we're going to right align it and the entire string that we're returning will take up 30 characters. So when we run this, we can see here that it's taken up a bunch of free space here and then aligned everything down here. So similarly, we can see this effect a bit more if we were to duplicate this row and put in another word, say banana. And now if we print this out, we can see that it still takes up exactly 30 characters and the text is right aligned. Now say we wanted to left align something. We could simply change this to this sign here. And now let's run it again. And we can see that apple remains right aligned, banana remains left aligned. Now, what if we wanted to center align something? Then we would be able to change the sign again. And let's put in a different string. We'll put in orange. So now let's run this so we can see what all three of them look like. Apple is right aligned, taking up 30 spaces in total. Banana takes up 30 characters as well. And orange is center aligned, taking up 30 characters in total. This is incredibly powerful stuff. Now, let's take a look at how to actually format values using f-strings. I'm going to clear this just to give us a bit more room to work with. We're going to declare two variables here. We have one number that is below one and one number that's quite large. Now, if we wanted to be able to print out this here as a percentage, we would be able to use f-strings for that. So we could write print f, and then we can place our number into here. And then we would want to place a colon, a period, and then a two for the number of decimal places that we want to have follow, and then a percent sign. So when we run this, we can see that it's multiplied the number by 100 and given us two decimal places. Now if we didn't want any decimal places, we could simply remove the number. Oh, we actually do need a zero in there. So now it actually rounds it down to 91%. So the percent sign here is quite valuable because it actually um, does multiply the value by 100. Now, what if we didn't want it to be a percent sign and we just wanted to have three precision factors? We could put in, say, three and an F. And now when we run this, we can see here that it's actually given us the, uh, the same number, but only to three decimal places. Similarly, we can turn something into a piece of currency by, let's use the large number for that, just so that we can move into the next piece as well simply by placing a dollar sign or whatever currency you want in front of it and changing this to 2F. So when we run this, we can see that it's uh, 126,000 and so on dollars. Now, one of the conventions in currency is that you often want your thousands to be comma separated. So the way that you can accomplish this using F strings is by placing a comma in front of the period there. So when we run this, we get the exact same value as before. However, our values are actually comma separated. Another really helpful method would be to be able to return something uh, uh, with exponents in it. And when we run this, we can see that, uh, actually, let me remove the dollar sign too. We can see here that it's put it into exponential format for us. This is really cool stuff. The last example that I want to take a look at is being able to 
place your sign in front of a value whether or not it's negative or positive. So let's start off with a negative value. So if we turn this into an F string and say we only wanted to return the value for a number, it will just turn the value into a string and it will include the negative sign in front of it. So now what if we change this to a positive number? It just returns one, but it doesn't include the sign in front of it, meaning it doesn't include a plus one. So the way that we can do this with Python F strings is by just including a colon and a plus sign. Now when we run this again, we can see that it's actually included the sign in front of it. So the last example that we'll take a look at is one of the new features introduced in Python 3.8 that's really useful for debugging. So say we have a variable here called number. I'll spell number correctly. We'll assign it a value of two. So while you're debugging your script, say you're realizing something funny is happening with your variable number and you just want to be able to print it out into the console. So previously you may have written an F string where you would have written number equals and then here you would have included number. So when we run this, we can print out the value of the variable number and the value of that variable as well. Now, this is a little bit repetitive because you're really just declaring the variable name and then the variable value. Now, Python 3.8 has made this quite a bit easier in order to be able to make this just a little bit less annoying to be able to type out. So I'm gonna take out whatever we have in our string here. Then in our curly braces, I'm just gonna write number equals, and that's it. So when we print this out now, we'll get the exact same result just in a much more intuitive and simple way to write this out. This is really helpful while you're stuck debugging your scripts and printing things to the console. So that covers off the entire lesson that I have for you on Python F strings. I really hope that you learned a lot. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.